What is going on, YouTube Fitness family? We are here at Zoo Culture Gym, and I'm going to give you my top three exercises. If I can only do three exercises for hypertrophy ever again, these would be my top three exercises. And this one, like, Phil came to me with the idea, and I really had to rack my brain for like what would be my three top exercises, just because there's so many obviously exercises you can do for legs. But I think I honed it in. I think I have pretty good reasoning for why these are my top three. So sit back, relax, and I'm gonna show you guys how to grow humongous legs with just three exercises. Let's get it. First exercise we are going to hop into is a Smith machine squat. So why Smith machine versus free bar? For me, there's a couple reasons. So first and foremost, it's gonna really allow me to drive a lot more time under tension, so slow down my reps a lot more comfortably than if I was using free bars, because like you have to worry about balance. I like to do pauses on the bottom of my rep, and so that really helps me to have this fixed plane, obviously 2D instead of be able to move in all different ways. That was loud. The other reason is because it allows me to focus on different, uh, have different impetus. So if my feet are farther forward, I'm getting a lot more glutes and hamstrings. If my feet are farther back, closer to myself, so I'm getting more knees over toes, more quad flexion, or knee flexion for quad stretch, I'm gonna get more quads. So I love the Smith of Allowed's diversity. You can even go wide stance, and kind of really push back against the bar to get even more glute focus. So you can be here and get even more of that glute focus. So for me, I just think Smith machine for hypertrophy purposes is just a little bit more robust than free bar. And that's just a personal preference. If you love free bar squatting and you're trying to get your max up, by all means, do your free bar squats. Plus, obviously ergonomically, it's really good to like get free bar squats down before you go into Smith machine because a lot of times Smith machine allows you to be a little bit more sloppy with your reps if you don't really have that hip mobility and that glute activation that you need to have proper squat form. So what I'm gonna do here is a little bit of a, a warm-up set. I just have a plate on there. I'm just gonna do a few reps with really good tempo. So the way I set my feet on these is slightly in front of the bar at about shoulder width and then toes pointed slightly out. So what I do is down and back, let the knees track out and then I'm gonna sit into it and I'm just gonna let it stretch a little bit here. Bottom of my rep. So this is my first set, so I'm not really trying to like drive hypertrophy here. What I'm trying to do is just get really good activation through the quads, get my glutes firing. So you can see how much stretch I'm getting at the bottom of my rep. Really good posture, try to keep that chest nice and up, upright, so I don't, I don't round my back. I'm not getting a butt, it's called a butt wing which is when your lower back starts to kind of round at the bottom of your rep. So some of the cues I like to use is keep my chin up, keep my chest proud, and pushing my elbows forward. A lot of people will have their elbows back here, which obviously a lot forces your kind of your shoulders forward. Whereas you go here, stay nice and upright. It's gonna allow you to keep the impetus where you wanna feel it. Probably gonna go one warm up set after this, and then we're gonna go into our working set. So with these, I'll probably shoot for that eight to 12 rep range with really good negative and about a one second pause at the bottom before driving out. So probably do one more warm up set with two plates. We'll go into our first working set. First working set, we're gonna go for 12 reps, a lot of people ask, why don't you use a belt? When I use a belt, it almost feels like I get like extra abdominal pressure, I guess. I mean, that's the point of it. That's what belt is for. So you can press your abs. You got something, when I do it, especially with like super slow tempo, all I feel is like it's digging into my freaking ribs, my like upper abdominal my obliques. It just doesn't feel good, honestly. So like at this point, I don't feel like I go really heavy enough to legitimize the need for it. I'm not trying to go for a one rep max. So I don't really feel like I need that internal bracing as if I were to be like a power lifter. So not to say you don't can't use it. It's just for me. I also see people using it on like the fucking leg press, which I think is just moronic. Just because you don't, you're not having to brace to your core. Everything should be pretty much from the waist down. So you shouldn't really need anything to brace your core on a leg press. So it's not gonna make your waist smaller, guys. So don't think, oh, if I wear my belt when I train everything. Sure, over time, there could be a little bit of atrophy in the abs, which might, you know, bleach makes your waist slightly smaller. But at the end of the day, most of what's gonna determine your waist structure is gonna be genetics and also how much you train your obliques and core. So if you guys are doing like side, core and twists and stuff like don't do that because it's going to build out the muscle there and make your waist look more blocky so this isn't going to make my waist more blocky by not wearing a belt on squats i don't think there's any science to that but if you guys are more comfortable in a belt obviously by all means so when we go here 12 reps 
really good negative, nice pause at the bottom. Driving out of the hole, you should get a lot of quad hypertrophy from this, just from all that knee flexion, the bottom of my rep. So, so I can do here. Feels uh, C2, a lot of people ask me why I do that. A little bit of like a double contraction, so to speak, the bottom of my rep. What I'm doing is finding that really good stretch position, and then I'm kind of digging into it a second time. And for me, it's just an intensity technique to try to get the most out of that stretch position where they've shown under load, you're gonna be able to drive a ton of hypertrophy from that stretch position. So I double hit it before I come out. But I think it's a little bit more of an advanced technique. So how are you guys starting out? Just do the pause then drive out. All right, second exercise, we're gonna do a deficit Bulgarian, which I know is everybody's fucking favorite exercise. So we're gonna make it even harder by adding a box here, about four inches off the ground for my front foot. The reason I'm elevating my front foot is because that's gonna allow me to go deeper in my rep. It's gonna allow me to have more knee bend, which is actually gonna cause more stretch through the quad. It's gonna induce more motor crew and more hypertrophy. So that's why I have the box here. The other thing that's really great about this exercise that allows me to open up my hip flexors which tend to be really tight so especially my first and second set of these i just really focus on getting really deep and providing that basically stretch under load is going to help me stay healthier for the long term because i notice that tight hips tight lower back obviously no bueno for the long term especially if you're sitting a lot for your job definitely want to utilize a lot of good range of motion on your leg days keep everything nice and long and healthy so what I'm gonna do here, I set my boxes up. Front foot is gonna be forward. I'm using this kind of sissy, sissy squat apparatus for my back foot, because I like to rest my ankle right on that pad. So I'm using a very minimal amount of drive from that back foot. I would highly recommend if you have something like this, use it. Or if you only have a bench, just use a bench. But I would go flat foot on the bench as opposed to a lot of people try to stick their toe into it. It's just not gonna be, you should only use your back leg. Technically it's almost like a guiding leg just for balance. And you really should be focusing on the heel drive and quad drive in that front leg and also glute in that front leg. So that's how it's gonna look. I just have a plate on here to start, so nothing crazy. Really good stretch here. Nice posture, then dig out. Really nice open chest. See how much stretch I get through the quad in that front leg. I get a really good stretch to that back, hip flexor, adductor, groin area. And really, like I said, I'm just kind of using that back leg as a guiding leg. I'm not really pushing that much force. I'm trying to use mostly the heel, pressing through the heel on that front foot, getting a lot of quad and glute drive in that front leg. And I'm gonna rack it between legs. The reason for that is because I don't want to take away from my second leg by going right into it. Because obviously, I'm a little aerobically taxed. My right leg's going to be taxed. So I don't want to take away from my set on my left leg. The other thing to note here, by increasing the range of motion, even at two, three, four inches, it's going to allow me to use so much less weight to drive just as much hypertrophy. And I think that's so beneficial because less taxing on the joints, it's going to provide more longevity. And they've proven more and more so that people will say, oh, I do half squats because my knees hurt. Well, really you should be decreasing the weight and utilizing full range of motion, unless you have some sort of knee replacement or something like that that's gonna prohibit you from going to full range. But otherwise, if you don't have any medical reason, you should be hitting full range with lighter weight. And that's actually been proven to keep your knees healthier over time so don't use that as an excuse unless there's a medical necessity and so the third thing i'll say about these if you want to grow your cake grow your ass that extra range of motion is going to give so much more stretch to the glutes and put them in a mechanically disadvantageous position so they really have to work super hard to get out of that bottom position and i guess one more thing because i have so much knowledge for you this is going to help you on your squats too if you get really deep your bulgarians you're strengthening your glutes, your adductors, your quads in that, in that stretch position, which is where most people fail on a squat, right? In the bottom, not at the top. So if you can strengthen yourself in the bottom echelon of those reps, you're inevitably gonna strengthen yourself on your other compound movements. So 
yeah, it's just a tremendous moving pattern. It's not the most fun, it sucks. But at the end of the day, a lot of times you do the stuff that's hardest to make the most progress. Tired of generic fitness plans that never get you results? Say goodbye to the guesswork with my one-on-one -on -one coaching. It offers personalized strategies for maximum results and sustainability. Ready to elevate your physique? Fill an application today. Link in the description. All right, if I could only do three exercises, my third exercise would be the leg press. Honestly, it's an extremely high impact, low risk exercise. You can utilize a lot of range of motion. You can work basically your whole leg, glutes, adductors, quads, hamstrings. It's a really, really great way to work the entire leg. But I'm going to show you exactly how to do your leg presses because it's not just a down and up. What we're gonna do is we're always going to clear the body with our knees. So what that's gonna, what, how we're gonna do that is point the toes out very slightly with about a shoulder width. Same way we kind of show, set up on our squats, we're doing the leg press. So what we're gonna do is lift off. We're gonna make sure we're holding, for you guys, I would say to start, make sure you're holding your butt down because as you get really deep, your butt's gonna naturally wanna roll off if your hips aren't loose. So I would say just start with a very light weight, let's say a plate, maybe two plates, max, just to get really comfortable with this depth. So a lot of times people are really used to doing their reps shortened, what we're gonna do is actually track out, allow us to clear the upper body, get a really good stretch, really good knee flexion, which is gonna allow for a lot of stretch to the quads. And you see, my butt's still planted. So a lot of people are like, oh, if you go that deep, it's gonna fuck up your lower back. Like, no, if your back is still flat on the bench and you're letting the knees clear your upper body, it's like doing a deep squat. It's so funny, the keyboard warriors, they'll be like, oh, you're not going deep enough on your squats, but then you're going too deep on your fucking leg press. Like, pick your battle, like, what do you want it to be? Like, make sure you go to depth, whatever exercise you're doing. So, as you can see, knees track out. Even if I don't have, my mobility is good enough now, even if I don't hold myself down, watch, this, you'll see, and you can fucking call me out on my bullshit if you want. I'm gonna go this deep. Is my butt coming off the pad? You tell me. I feel no pressure in my lower back. I feel all impetus through my quads, through my glutes, through my adductors, and a really good stretch. I could sit here, it says 10 plates on here. I could sit here probably comfortably for a good five minutes. And that's because I've worked so hard on working on this range of motion over time under load. This isn't just stretching, guys. This is really utilizing the leg press to get those reps in at depth and provide that load in a stretch position to continue to open up that tissue over time. That wasn't earned in a week. That wasn't earned in two weeks. That was earned in like five years. So not to say it's gonna take you that long, but it was a lot of trial and error for me. It took a lot of time. But now I would say if you'd worked on this really every single leg day, worked on improving your range of motion, I'd say within two to three months, you'll feel like your, your depth on everything is improving. You'll feel a lot looser on your reps. So this is how my leg preps reps look. If it's five plates, eight plates, 10 plates, it's like this right here. Really controlled eccentric, knees clear the upper body, big stretch, flat back, knees track out, and then drive. So I always set that for anywhere between eight and 15 reps with that tempo. And I, I'm telling you right now that it's probably responsible for about 50% of my leg growth over the last three to four years because of the fact that I can go heavier really safely, not put my lower back in a precarious position, not axial load, meaning pressure on my spine. So I prefer it even to, let's say, a squat because of the fact, for hypertrophy, solely because of the fact that I have no axial loading, I have no, much less risk on the joints, much less risk of a hernia, all of these things are compounding. So the last cue I'll give you guys is make sure that that back plate is in an upright position. So I have the back plate in the highest position and that allows me to keep a lot of impetus in the adductors and the glutes at the bottom of my rep because if I'm back here, it's going to probably bottom out the machine before I get to that really good depth. So by having the back up, it's basically putting me more into that like pretzel shape, the bottom people. I've literally had people come over and ask me if I'm okay. Like I, they think I like stalled out at the bottom of my rep because sometimes I have like eight plates on there. I'm doing like a five second pause. The bottom people run over like, dude, are you stuck? I'm like now I'm good, I'm just being an asshole. So, um, but yeah, I would say that's why 
Leg press number is number three for me, hands down. It probably, if I literally had one exercise to do, if like you're like you're doing a bodybuilding show, in six months you can only do one, one movement pattern, uh, one movement pattern, and that's it. It would be the leg press. I know that's crazy. I know it's counterintuitive. It's different than probably most experts would say. For me, for hypertrophy reasons, it is risk reward. It's through the roof and. Uh, I think it's something you should definitely add to your routine, especially at that range of motion. It's gonna help you with your squats. It's gonna help you with your other compound movements. If you're doing any Olympic lifting, it's gonna help you. So yeah, add it to your routine. But I hope you guys loved this video. I'm gonna be adding more videos like this. I really had to think really hard about what would be my three only leg exercises because I'm like, dude, I love the seated hamstring, but I just don't think it's compound enough. So I really racked my brain for this. I hope you guys are loving the content. If you guys, our need of any of the best apparel in the game, make sure you hit Alphalete. It helps me, helps support the channel, helps Alphalete as a brand. Use code Eric, the link will be in the description. These shorts are also amazing. If you ever want some great leg day shorts, keeps everything nice and together, so to speak. So yeah, I will see you guys on the next video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. See you guys later.